What's up guys, Jason here, betterbody90.com. And I just wanna talk real quick, maybe give a few uh, meal prep tips as far as, I mean, this was subjective to me. This is the path that I have chosen, but this is what's worked. And I wanted to just kind of give you some highlights and share with you the overall idea of my macros and my, my meal prepping plan and the foods that I consume that have helped me uh, get shredded and retain like to stay lean and to also retain what muscle I have um, I want to share with you basically just the the overall like the cliff notes uh, because you know it's there's a lot of different there's a lot of information out there there's a lot of different diets and this isn't by no means uh, validating mine, my approach versus other approaches or saying others aren't good. Like I'm, I'm not talking about intermittent fasting. I'm not talking about being vegan. I'm not talking about plant-based. I'm not talking about uh, keto. I'm not going to talk about anything. I don't have any, like uh, any detailed experience with my overall approach is just a straight conventional uh, lean meats, fruits, vegetables, like carbs aren't bad. In fact, I consume about, uh, according to MyFitnessPal, and the averages, the rough idea, it's not exact, it's never exact, but it's as exact as it could be by putting in the information. Uh, my carbs are anywhere from 40 to about 50 to 55% of my daily intake of calories, because I like energy, and I feel good that way. I haven't tried keto. So I don't know, but I haven't uh, done the South Beach diet. I haven't done a lot of these particular specific diets. I like well-rounded, so that's kind of the approach that I went with here. And again, that's just lean meats, uh, like like chicken. Uh, of course, I had turkey over Thanksgiving, but typically it's chicken. Like I consume a lot of chicken. Uh, recently, I've been incorporating a lot of egg whites. Now I have during this whole process since April, I eat a lot of eggs and I have nothing wrong with the egg yolks. In fact, the egg yolks have a lot of great nutrition and uh, a lot of vitamins, a lot of minerals, and even the fats, there's nothing wrong with fat. And I mean, if you look at people that do keto, I mean, people get good results. I don't know about the internals. I don't know about the micronutrition. And that's what's important here is the approach that I've taken consistently over time has not only allowed me to remain, uh, to be sustainable with it, even through the holiday season, enjoy great foods, but also uh, stay on goal. Uh, but my blood work that I've had reflects the process that I'm, I'm balanced in my micronutrition as well, which is important because you could, you could get lean, you could get ripped eating a lot of different ways if you just kind of focus on the overall uh, activity levels that you have and your calories in versus calories out. But that does not necessarily mean that you are healthy on the inside. That does not necessarily mean that you have balanced vitamins and minerals. So those are important too. That's why I advocate, why I like in my own personal journey, why I get my blood work occasionally. Uh, I try to do it at least once a year annually. Uh, I don't really go to the doctor that often, but really ever. So I like to at least just check up, see what's going on inside. So I, I do recommend that. And what I do is I just go on like, I think it's health testing centers or there's websites you can basically buy blood work. I used to go to LabCorp, but now like they send it over, like you buy it and then it's, it's sent over to like LabCorp or this last time it's a little different, it's with Quest. But basically it's just like a third party. You go to the lab and they draw your blood and, and uh, it's pretty cheap, it's affordable. I don't have to go to the doctor and it kind of gives me an idea of what's going on inside. What are my, what are my balances? Uh, what are my organ functions? Things like that, those are important to know. So if you haven't done that in a long time, uh, it's probably a good idea that you go ahead and get that checked. Even if you haven't started like a new nutritional approach, it's actually, I think, crucial or very important that you do go and get your blood work and have a blood panel, uh, your blood lipids, your cholesterol, your sugars, like all these things to see where you are at uh, when you get started on a new uh, way of eating especially if it's completely drastic or completely different. Or if you've been doing, say you've been doing keto for like a year and you've got great results, you got, uh, you got lean, you, you, know, you lost the body fat, you were looking to lose, whatever. Um, it's a good idea to get checked out. But anyway, I digress from all that. What I focused on and what I've shared in my meal prepping stuff is just uh, lean meats, vegetables, I eat fruit, I have my coffee, uh, I've consumed a lot of, like I, I use a lot of nuts, mainly walnuts because I like that they're higher in polyunsaturated fats. Um, I don't know all the main differences. All I know from some basic research that I've done is that polyunsaturated fats 
are the best type of fats. If you know more than I do, I'd love uh, leave a comment below and let me know uh, maybe some articles or maybe some studies or some information that will help me better understand this stuff. But polyunsaturated is the most ideal, then monounsaturated, then saturated fats. Uh, then of course you want to avoid like trans fats. Saturated fats aren't bad as long as you have them within a balance. And I'll be more than happy. Like I, I can show you my, my cholesterol levels, uh, the way I consume things, the, the amount of saturated fats that I have on a daily basis, um, anywhere from usually 10 to 20 grams or so. And uh, you know, it's from meat sources. I just eat balanced. There's nothing really, I, I like it sustainable because that is the easiest way. Now, I do it in a uh, conventional way. What I mean by conventional is I buy like the cheapest mass produced whole foods that I can at this point. So it's affordable. Uh, it's not necessarily the best way. What I would like to do over time is start going to some local farms, getting farm fresh eggs, grass fed beef, like the, the most optimal uh, of those sources that I can get, like fresh chicken, that's free roam, all that, all those meats and all that stuff. Because right now, I mean, what I do is I go, uh, usually Sam's Club, and it's just the cheapest. Like I get the big family packs of chicken, which is just chicken breast with rib meat, and I'm pretty sure it's augmented with like, like with water or something to puff it up. But it, it's great, it's worked for me. I've been eating since April, my everything looks good in blood work, uh, my body has responded well. Like I said, I'd like to improve that stuff, but that, it's, you gotta start somewhere, okay? So what I recommend is just starting with a nice conventional approach. If you haven't never done any kind of meal prepping, just eat some lean meats. Again, that would be chicken. Um, you can incorporate eggs, nothing wrong with eggs. I wouldn't eat like a dozen a day, um, but what I do is usually like this morning, I actually, I've had in my total breakfast, I had seven eggs, but it was six egg whites and then one whole egg, because I still want some of the yolk, but I'm just trying to, um, I like to eat throughout the day, and I don't want to start out my morning with a massive calorie hit. You know, I don't want to take out of my calories for the day right first thing in the morning, because I like to eat throughout the day. So if, I, you know, if I'm having a thousand calories at breakfast, which the conventional American diet, if you're going out to eat or whatever, especially if you're having breakfast foods, which are not only loaded in carbs and not, not just carbs, but there's different types of carbs. There's the lower and higher glycemic carbs. If you go and you're having, you're going to like a diner and you're getting some eggs, pancakes, bacon, all that stuff with maple syrup and whether it's real butter or fake butter or whatever, you're easily consuming. And then of course you have a coffee with some sugar and cream in it. I mean, that, that could be 1500 calories like that first thing in the day. And then of course you have multiple meals throughout the day. Uh, it all adds up really, really fast. So you don't have to go crazy with tracking, but it is, I, if you wanna get somewhere, like if you have a specific goal, it is, I don't think there's much of any other way. Sure, you could go about it without tracking, without writing things down, without putting things in MyFitnessPal, whatever, but it's very unlikely that you're, you're gonna get there where you really wanna go, or it's gonna take longer than it could if you just had the data, if you just set up some discipline and just set up a system, and just went with that, it's, it's not gonna be easy, of course. Like the beginning when I started doing this stuff, even though I, have, I had a lot of knowledge, uh, setting up the system was, it was different. It was a change of pace. But that's where I got the meal prep containers, I got the food scale, I started writing things down in my little paper journal, and I started inputting it into MyFitnessPal. I just picked some numbers and I went with it, and uh, I've just improved it since then. That's what's happened is over the months is I've gotten more adventurous, I've started changing things up, um, I stick with the same basic structure, but I change up the foods and I make things, uh, I try to do, like I want it to be, it has to be really good. Like this morning I had this thing, uh, I've been experimenting the last couple days, or really the last week I've been making protein pancakes. There's no flour in them, there's no sugar, um, but you know, I'll share, they're still sweet and they're really good. And I've been trying to figure out ways to make them so that they are uh, the best I can make them, so they puff up and all that stuff. So I'm experimenting, but uh, it's really like, I, I like to enjoy my food, right? I'm not try just eating like plain rice, plain chicken, plain broccoli, no spices, like that's just not sustainable. And if you've ever tried that, you know. So, um, okay, let's, let's keep this video kind of short today, but uh, lean meats, whole fruits, whole vegetables, uh, nuts, great sources of fats. Sure, use olive oil. Sure, use butter. 
but measure it. If you're gonna use butter, I highly recommend that you, you know, on, on a stick of butter, there are measurements, right? Use the measurements. When I use butter, it's sparingly, but every once in a while I wanna use it, just add, it tastes really, really good. I mean, if you can get fresh cream butter, great. But again, I'm talking about conventional, the cheapest possible approach right now. You can improve that later on, but depending on your financial situation, whatever else, sometimes it's easier just to, to keep it as cheap as possible, but that's healthier than if you are spending the same amount of money on prepackaged foods, even prepackaged meals that just are loaded with preservatives and, and even lesser quality than you could get if you're buying the cheapest mass produced stuff like I'm talking about. Like uh, whole foods is the best way. And I don't often, I don't usually steam or boil stuff because that typically leaches out vitamins and minerals. So, um, I mean, th the frozen vegetables I get, uh, I get frozen vegetables and frozen fruits because it's cheap and you can get a large amount of it. I typically shop at Sam's Club. I'm sure it's not the most ideal stuff. I don't know if it was freshly farmed and then frozen right away. I don't know the, if it's thawed and ref I don't know, you know, the process from getting to the store to me buying it. So I'm sure it's not the most dense of vitamins and minerals. So I don't really want to, uh, you know, boil it or steam it. I do microwave a lot, which I understand, you know, microwaving things tends to kill a lot of stuff, a lot of the good stuff as far as micronutrients, but it is what it is. My health is totally like it's, it's going forward the direction I want it to go. So don't be scared <laughs> because too many people get so wrapped up in all these little nuances and all these details that they don't even start. Because, you know, suddenly you're, you're like, okay, well, Jason has a good idea. It's clearly working for him. It's clearly consistent, clearly sustainable, and he can, he enjoys it. And it's something that can go on for years and years. And it's something that maybe I want to do. And then suddenly somebody makes a post about how evil microwaves are or how you should only buy organic or meat's bad or whatever. All these different people with all these different random ideas. But at the end of the day, you know, I'm doing, I'm, I'm just doing what's, what's here. I'm, I've been doing this consistently and it's working. So... You can get wrapped up in all the little nuances and all the details and, and have paralysis by analysis, or you can just get started. Even if you don't know, if you don't, I don't have time, I don't, whatever, you do have time. And trust me, if you start prepping your food in advance, put it in the freezer. Get your food scale, get food containers, prep all your food in advance. Just take a day, maybe two days. Like some days, if I'm really lazy or it's really late, I might batch bake a bunch of chicken or put it on the grill. If I don't feel like doing the whole prep thing, I'll just put it in the fridge and over the next one to two days, then I'll weigh it out and then I'll just put it in the containers and throw it in the freezer. And it's super easy. The, the vegetables, yeah, you could buy fresh, but right now I'm just getting the frozen stuff so I can just weigh it out, put it in the, the food prep containers with the freshly cooked chicken that I've made or sweet potatoes or whatever, and then just uh, put that in the freezer and it's good to go. I've got food that's been in the freezer for like three weeks now. I actually got ahead of myself, so I'm trying to kind of get caught up on everything and get through all the stuff that I have. So right now I am, uh, I'm just wrapping up and getting through all that stuff and I'll be doing a fresh prep batch here soon. So anyway, I digress. I keep getting distracted by Ariel because she is just wandering around and clicking everywhere. Don't be, don't, don't be scared and just conventional is fine. Just a nice conventional approach with food, nice and balanced macros. Uh, like I said, I'm about 40 to 50-ish percent per day of carbohydrates. They're typically a lower glycemic uh, starch here, carb carbohydrates. If I'm not eating sugar, I, I don't eat table sugar. I do eat fructose from fruit. I get lactose from my one cup of milk that I steam for my coffee every single day, sometimes two, as long as it fits within my overall calorie goals, no big deal. My fats right now are, uh, recent, the last couple days they've been a little bit lower, but even when I was starting this out, 60 to 80 per, uh, grams, excuse me, of my, uh, usually about 20 to 30% of my, my total calorie intake. And then protein, I always just try to hit about one gram per pound of body fat, give or take, usually a little bit more. So uh, that just kind of, that's my main focus, my main macro. So try to make sure I'm getting, if I'm 140 pounds, 150 pounds, I try to get between 140 to 160 grams. So that's it guys. Uh, just nice conventional approach, nice and clean. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, I'll keep bringing in more content. I just kind of wanted to just focus a little more, clarify a little bit on that subject. Um, Jason here, betterbody90.com. Keep doing what it takes, and I will see you guys next video.